Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jim Blair, and I'm going to be talking about trunk gating with Jenkins, Garrett, and Zool. Um, by way of introduction, I work for Hewlett Packard, uh, and I work on the OpenStack project, which probably could use a little explanation. Um, by that, I mean that I work nearly full time on the infrastructure of the OpenStack project itself. Um, OpenStack is a, uh, a collaboration among several companies, actually quite a few companies, to, uh, to create a cloud computing uh, fabric. And it's a, quite a large open source project. Um, so by that, I mean if you want to run your own oh, Amazon Web Services or you want to uh, run a private cloud in your own data center, uh, you can download this open source software to do it. And, uh, and it uses standard APIs, and it's going to be the same software that HP Cloud Services is running, the same software that uh, Rackspace is running in their cloud, and several other startups are all helping with this as well. So, um, so that's sort of what OpenStack is. Um, so I'm part of a team that manages the um, continuous integration and development infrastructure for the project as a whole, which means that even though I work for HP, uh, I work with people from all sorts of companies um, that are trying to contribute to the project. So that'll, that'll become a little bit relevant when I start talking about how, um, how all this came to pass. So this presentation might show you a few things. Um, you might learn a little bit about the OpenStack development process, um, which considering the size of our project uh, with the, the number of contributing companies uh, that we have is actually kind of interesting and fairly unique at this point. Uh, I'm gonna talk about project gating, um, which is actually something a couple of people have mentioned today uh, under a couple of different names. Uh, it's, it's very similar to what uh, Kosuke called uh, validated merges this morning. Um, so honestly, this is kind of a, a new area for CI. Um, and I think it's a really interesting area. It's essentially preemptive CI. So instead of having your CI system tell you who broke something and when uh, and where, you try to prevent things from being broken in the first place. So altogether, I think a worthy way to spend our time. Um, I'm gonna be talking about Zool, which is a system that we wrote to basically to perform trunk gating. Uh, it's a, a piece of free software that, of course, you can download and run yourself and help us develop that, um, that talks to Jenkins over the Jenkins um, uh, API, as well as uh, interfacing with Garrett, which is our code review system. And uh, if nothing else, you'll at least see an example of uh, a, a program that uses the Jenkins API, um, which someone tweeted earlier uh, they'd like to see more of. So uh, this, is, this is certainly an example of, as the API matures, how you can take whatever system and needs you have and start having Jenkins help you out with them. So uh, back to OpenStack. It's, um, it's quite a large project. And when I say a project, I'm telling a little bit of a lie because it's several projects. It's um, just... Just these, uh, the top half of this list uh, are, are the, the core projects that, that make up the, the OpenStack platform. Uh, Nova is, is the largest. It's the computing fabric controller. It's the thing that, you, that spins up virtual machines for you. Uh, Swift is object storage. Glance is image storage. Uh, you know, we've got identity management, networking, uh, a web dashboard, client projects for all of those. So it turns out that when we talk about OpenStack, the project, we really mean at least 30 individual uh, projects that all have to somehow work with each other and, uh, and work as a seamless whole. Uh, the contributors for the project, by virtue of the fact that there is no one company that's driving this, it really is a collaboration among several large companies like Cisco, HP, and Rackspace, uh, and Dell, as well as uh, several startup companies. Um, that means the, the large companies, on average, might have a couple of hundred 
developers working on it. The small ones might have a few tens of developers. So uh, by the time we're done, we're talking about 300 active contributors uh, committing code to the repository from lots of different companies. There's no single management for structure here. So you know you can't you can't you can't go up the chain and, and make sure that people are coding things certain ways and doing their workflow in certain ways. Uh, we're really open and we're really sort of democratic and how that affects a lot of how we've implemented the developer infrastructure. So that we, we try to welcome uh, changes submitted from, from anybody, uh, from any of those companies. If you walk in off the street um, and submit a change, we'll help you out. So what that means though is that um, you know, they're, they're, we don't have a corporate department doing all of this CI stuff. We don't, um, there's, we sort of have to um, have a system that makes it easy for people to jump right in and start developing, but also start developing at the level that we need their code to be. So um, a lot of what we're doing is trying to make sure that when people, uh, write code, it's, it meets the same standards that everybody else's code does. So that's actually a, 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 a big driver for why we do uh, project gating, um, so that we, we can see up front, you know, you've, you've submitted a patch, uh, it has tests, it passes the tests, it doesn't break anything else before you even consider merging it, uh, and, and in fact, it won't get merged in, unless they do. So, so a lot of this is to just deal with um, the, the highly variable um, rate and quality of code that we get from developers, which, um, of course, we see it in an open source project. Um, I'm guessing that you might see it in your own private organizations as well. Um, so that's, like I said, that's sort of the, the driver behind a lot of this. We, we try to make it easy for, we're also a rapidly growing project, so new companies are always uh, jumping in and hiring new developers. HP is hiring new developers, by the way. Um, and so a lot of this is, is like I said, easy to, uh, to, to try to make it easy to onboard new developers um, and sort of not have them waste all of their time trying to figure out you know, how, to, how to set up our fairly complicated test system. Um, not have them waste their time writing test systems on their own, things like that. Um, so the gated trunk, I've, I've talked a little bit about this, but um, it's, it's proved very popular with uh, the core developers of the project. Um, it, in a sense, it protects them and it protects their time. So um, what, what it looks like, you know, when you, as a developer, are going to start working on a change, you check out the tree and you know that the tree is working because no changes can actually land in the tree that break it. So that's, that's a great place to be able to start from, not having to start your day um, fixing somebody else's bug. Um, and then of course, when you're doing code reviews, um, you know, the, the way that we provide feedback um, means that, that it's right there in front of you, um, what the tests look like before you even decide to, to, to merge the code. Um, and again, it's egalitarian. So uh, we, th there are a few strong personalities in the OpenStack project, but it's honestly, we try to, to, to make sure that it's not a personality-driven project. Um, we try to make sure that it's very democratic. Uh, the process is the same for everyone. So in, in a sense, encoding what you want the project to look like in tests and running those tests automatically is a great way to ensure that, that the project is moving in the direction that uh, people have set for it. Um, and as a sort of fully automated and fully democratic and egalitarian sort of, sort of way. Um, so you, you don't see quite as, uh, you don't see people being um, uh, sort of arbitrary in how they review code uh, because of the system. So uh, with the number of projects that we have and the number of changes that we do, um, it's, automation is really important for us. We, we spend a lot of our time making sure that um, not only you know, is, is the running of tests and the merging of changes automated, 
but uh, we automate some of the releases of uh, our software through Jenkins. So we, we have things, I'll get into more detail later, but you know, when we tag a repository, that will cause Jenkins to automatically start uh, making a release build and pushing it up to PyPy and, and things like that. So um, Jenkins is pretty much the core of our automation. Um, and and it, it just, we have about 305 jobs in Jenkins right now and they all, um, they're not just testing. They're, they're testing, building, releasing, uh, publishing documentation, uh, the whole gamut really. Uh, so just a little bit about uh, the process flows for a developer. Um, I probably should have stressed that OpenStack is a Python um, project early on. So, uh, <laughs> so what we do is uh, developers set up a virtual environment, which is um, uh, you know Python's way of, of downloading all of the libraries that you need to develop with. It's 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 almost as good as Maven, but not quite. Actually, it's it's not as good as Maven. Let's let's face it. No, we'll see if we can fix that. Um, so you you develop your code in a virtual environment um, when you're happy with it. Well, ideally, you know you'd run the test suite on it. But honestly, what we're seeing is uh, developers are um, getting more and more comfortable with, with Jenkins running this stuff for them. Um, and since the test suite's kind of slow, uh, oftentimes they'll just uh, commit it and push it up and see what happens. So uh, they submit the code review to Garrett, um, where you know through the mechanisms I'll talk about later, uh, Jenkins is is going to run you know a complete unit test suite on it, uh, and then the core reviewers of the project are going to look at it and decide uh, whether you can program or not. And uh, assuming that everybody is happy with that, assuming Jenkins is happy with it, and the core reviewers like it. Um, the core reviewers approve it, and then we run it through tests again. Except this time, what we're doing is we're 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 going to run the tests in uh, a serialized manner, in a way that um, uh, only if the tests pass does the code merge. So that's fully automated. So basically, the 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 workflow is you write some code, you push it up, it gets approved, and then if it passes tests after approval, it gets merged. Uh, and then, of course, we might do some things after it, like uh, you know, run code coverage uh, reports and publish documentation and things like that. Um, so, since Garrett's sort of the the um, the main thing that developers see here, um, uh, let me talk about that a little bit. It's a code review system that Google developed for the Android project. Um, a lot of you may be happy to learn that it is written in Java. Um, it's a standalone patch review system. Uh, and it's quite full featured. It has a, a, um, a good set of hooks, so you can, um, you know, trigger things when people upload changes and changes get merged and that sort of thing. Uh, it's got an event stream, so you can do all of that in real time. Um, it, you know, does uh, queries and outfort, uh, outputs uh, the results of the queries in JSON format, so it's um, pretty extensible. Um, and uh, you can add as many code review categories to it as you want. It comes with like uh, with verified and code review as default. But if you have uh, other kinds of tests you need to run, other kinds of verification, uh, you know, license checks, copyright assignments, thing, whatever you need, you can add code review categories for it, and it'll um, it'll display that very nicely. Uh, let me actually real quick hop over and show you. Um, our Garrett system. So, you know, this is this is the current list of open bugs. Uh, sorry, of uh, open uh, code reviews for for OpenStack. So, um, you know, you can you can see right here. Here's somebody who uh, submitted a change that fixes a bug in Keystone. Here's um, let me just pick a random change for uh, for Nova here. So uh, you can see. Um, you know, it's got the commit message. It's got uh, people who have reviewed it in the past. Uh, Jenkins has already run on this change and kind of likes it. Um, but you can see it's actually, this is evolving over time. So this is the fourth patch set of this change. Um, here's the change itself. Here's the whole series of, of comments on it. They've been compressed for size. But So you can see what, what, what happens actually is um, somebody 
you know, uploads a, uh, uploads a change, Jenkins runs on it. Turns out it didn't work the first time. So, you know, it, it, it failed the unit tests, it failed uh, uh, style checks, it failed um, uh, more style checks. Uh, so, so he kept working on it, and eventually Jenkins liked it, passed all the tests, um, still didn't get through code review. So, um, you know, it sort of goes on like that. So that's, that's how developers see this system. And they don't actually spend a lot of time looking at Jenkins. They don't look at red balls and green balls or blue balls or whatever your preference is. Um, they, they mostly see Jenkins this way, um, in the context of the change that's being uh, proposed for merging. Uh, eventually, uh, somebody will hopefully like this change and, uh, and approve it. And then, like I said, this, that whole process runs once again uh, right before it gets merged. Um, this is a more formal list of the, the, the sort of states that, that those changes go through. Um, so the, Garrett provides the following triggers that, that we find interesting. Um, a patch set is uploaded. That's basically what I was just talking about, where every time you upload a patch, we start running a change on it. Um, when a change gets merged, um, that's when we want to uh, start uh, running, um, you know, documentation builds and things like that. And then comment added. So it turns out we actually also have our system set up to do certain things when people leave certain kinds of comments. So um, uh, all of these things are available from Garrett, and Zool uh, makes use of them. And I'll talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, and I just showed you the actual page, so I'm not. That's this is more of a archive copy in case the internet doesn't work. Um, so here's how we use Jenkins. Um, we have, um, and we've sort of come up with uh, names for some of these uh, jobs. Uh, we have a couple different classes of jobs. We have check and gate jobs, which tend to be the exact same jobs, but they're run in different contexts. So um, that's like what I, what I was just showing you, where uh, unit tests and integration tests and code style tests all run when, uh, when you upload a patch. We call that a check job, because it's, it's just informative. It honestly, you can override it if you want in code review. It doesn't really have any, any impact on what happens with the change. Uh, when we run things as part of the gate, um, then, then they matter. You can't override them. Uh, it's, it's, it's essentially the same set of jobs, but um, they're required to pass before your change merges into the repository. And then there's post-merge jobs. And like I said, documentation, tarballs, uploading things to, to PyPy. Um, that all just happens after something's been merged. So... Uh, the piece of software that we use to drive all of this is called Zool. Um, we, we started off doing our trunk gating with actually just the Garrett trigger plugin, which, by the way, is a great plugin. If you're using Garrett, um, you probably want to look at the Garrett trigger plugin and see what it can do. Um, so we, we started off by, by doing that. Um, and it was great up to a point, but then we started doing uh, some more complex things. And... Uh, being Python hackers, we felt that it would be better for us to uh, to sort of at least prototype this out in Python, if not actually end up with a, a workable product at the end. Um, and so we developed Zool, which is a, um, like I said, it's a free software system that drives our, uh, our gating and testing and automation. So it listens to the Garrett event stream, and it triggers Jenkins builds and it gets uh, information back from Jenkins and reports back to Garrett. And so uh, as a trunk gating system, it's the thing that makes decisions about whether changes land. Um, it's, you know, when, when somebody approves a change, Zool's going to ask Jenkins to run tests on it, and if Jenkins uh, passes those, if those tests pass in Jenkins, then Zool will tell Garrett to merge it. So um, it sort of sits in the middle of these programs and makes a lot of decisions. As um, because of the complexity of our system, we actually um, made it fairly general purpose. So um, Zool knows how to do trunk gating. That's not the only thing it does. 
uh, it has a very flexible configuration language that, that you can use to set it up to do almost any kind of uh, automation. Um, and so the, the, sort of the thing that makes it um, really exciting, the thing that took us past what we could do with the Garrett Trigger plugin easily was the parallel testing of serialized changes. And this is, um, it might take a little bit to wrap your head around this. Um, so <laughs> when we're doing truck gating, we want to, uh, we want to land every change to the, um, to the trunk in sequence because we want to make sure that no, uh, no change breaks the trunk. So that means that you know, we can't just merge a whole bunch of changes and then go back and figure out which one broke. What we want to do is, is, is somebody proposes a change, test it, um, and if it works, merge it. And if it doesn't, don't merge it. But our testing system takes quite a while. Um, you know, it's, it's all told it's maybe 40 minutes to an hour at this point. Um, it's about to get a lot longer, I hope, as uh, more and more integration tests come online. But um, if you tested all of those in sequence, you can imagine that uh, you know if it took an hour, you could only land 24 changes in a day. And across 30 projects, that would be problematic. So what Zool does is it tests changes in parallel and does it using speculative execution. So um, the, the idea is that it'll, um, it's going to assume that most of the tests, most of the changes are going to pass tests. And assuming that that's the case, it can actually merge them very quickly because it can test them all together. Uh, if a change turns out not to have passed tests, then, uh, then it cancels builds and restarts. So uh, I'll actually show you a little demonstration in a, sec in a second here. So we've got two projects, Nova and Keystone, just to, to keep it simple, right? And, um, you know, they're, they're, their heads, the heads of their repository are, are here, right? Somebody um, starts submitting changes. Um, somebody submits a change to Nova, and then somebody submits another change to Nova, and then somebody submits a change to Keystone, and then maybe another change to Nova, right? So um, this, is, this is the sort of uh, end of the day, everybody's getting ready to go home. They, maybe send all of their commits up to, for review. Um, so, but we want to merge all of those changes in sequence. And note, even there's a second project in here. We actually want to maintain the sequence between Nova and Keystone because like I said, all of the OpenStack projects have to work together. And it turns out you can break Nova by committing a change to Keystone. So um, this is actually what drives a lot of the, the our, our complexity, whereas, um, you know, you, it's one thing to sort of consider you have a project and somebody commits a change and it breaks it. Well, in our situation, we have lots of projects and if you commit a change to any of them, you could break any other project. So it's very important that we test all of these changes to all of the projects in the right order and, uh, and make sure that they all still work together. So uh, what Zool does is it, uh, you know, as these changes arrive, it uh, sets up a sort of dependency order between them. So it's going to, to um, test um, it's going to test them as fast as it can, but the one that arrived first sort of has priority. So um, it's going to start running tests on all of these changes um, more or less at the same time. Some of them are going to finish before others. Um, some of them are going to pass. Some of them are going to fail. Um, so for instance, what we've got here is that the, the changes for, um, for, sorry, the tests for the first change pass. So the first change is good. Uh, and Zool is going to merge it. Uh, the test for the second change also passed, and so Zool is going to merge that as well. The tests for the third change to Keystone did not pass, um, so Zool is not going to merge that. It's just going to send a report back to Garrett saying this, this change didn't pass tests. So here's the interesting thing. Um, this last change uh, to Nova, it also failed, but Zool can't know for sure whether that was because um, it's a real failure in this change or if it's because it was broken by that keystone change. So what Zool does at this point is it cancels any of the outstanding builds uh, for this job and starts running them again 
to see if alone, uh, on the top of a good tree, will this change pass. And this time it does, and so this change gets merged. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how we configure Zool. Um, Zool has, uh, so the configuration file is in YAML. Uh, we really like dealing with YAML. It's easy for us to read and it's easy for the computers to read. Um, so, uh, and, and as I show you this, I, I hope you'll, you'll see that it's sort of, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to follow what's going on. So um, Zool has a number, uh, so a basic concept in Zool is the idea of a pipeline. Um, and we, we have a number, of, a number of them. I've sort of alluded to them. We have one called the check pipeline, one called the gate pipeline, one called the post pipeline, and, and so forth. And basically, um, the pipeline is something that uh, watches for events in Garrett, and when it sees them, it starts uh, triggering jobs that have been associated with that pipeline. So we can say that when every, whenever anyone uploads a patch set, we want to run a certain set of jobs, uh, like the unit tests and the code style tests and, and things like that. Um, and then, of course, we tell what we tell Zool what to do with it. So this is this is honestly not much more complicated than what we actually have in our configuration. It's shortened slightly to, you know, for for a presentation. But um, basically, we just say, "Hey, Zool, there's pipeline. It's called check. Run whenever a patch set is created." And uh, if all the jobs succeed, then leave a vote in Garrett that's plus one. If they fail, leave a vote that's minus one. Um, the gate pipeline is configured very similarly, uh, except we don't do it when a patch that is uploaded. We do it when somebody leaves a comment in Garrett that says, or sorry, somebody leaves a review in Garrett um, with the approval set bit, the approval bit set. So they, uh, when somebody approves a patch, it triggers um, the jobs in this pipeline. And uh, in that case, we say, we want you to leave a plus two vote in Garrett, which literally means I, you know, this is really verified. It's obviously more than one. Um, and, uh, and if it succeeds, we want you to merge it to the repository. So that's what the submit true is. Um, and then uh, if it fails, leave a negative two vote, as in this really doesn't work and it's not going to mer get merged. Um, so that's, that's pretty much all there is to the gate pipeline. Um, the post merge pipeline is, um, um, it's pretty interesting. We, it turns out that there's a lot that we can do with, um, other kinds of, uh, automation with Zool. So we, you know, in, in the, um, in the case of the, the post pipeline, we say whenever a ref has been updated um, and it's on a branch, that's what this little regular expression is, um, uh, if it's on a branch like master, um, then we start running the documentation build jobs and tarball build jobs and things like that. Um, we didn't envision these two pipelines when we first started writing Zool. Uh, they sort of, we, we realized that everything that we had, everything that we needed to do these was already in Zool because we made it uh, generalized enough. So there's a silent pipeline, which is uh, when somebody uploads a patch set, run these jobs and don't tell anybody about it, which is great for uh, jobs that are in development. You can, you can actually get them running on uh, changes in, in exactly the same way that you're going to do it in production, uh, but not um, bother anybody with uh, you know, false errors and things like that. And then the publish pipeline um, turns out to be really handy. That's the thing that where we, where we tag something in the repository, it triggers a build in the publish pipeline, which will do a um, build the Python package and upload it to PyPy. So essentially we've got automatic publishing on tagging with just this little bit of YAML. Um, so then uh, once you've defined your pipelines, you set up your projects. So here's the, um, the nearly current definition of the OpenStack Nova project, um, where we say um, when anybody uploads a patch set, you know, the, it runs the jobs in the check pipeline, which are make sure the change can merge, uh, run the PEP8, which is a style check on it, run the unit tests in Python 2.6 and 2.7, uh, and then run an integration test of the whole system 
um, our integration test suite is called Tempest. So this is running uh, Tempest across not only this change, but this change with the entire system as it's currently defined. Um, same thing, same jobs for gate. They could be different. In this case, they're the same. And um, like I said, whenever something gets merged, we build a tarball and publish the documentation. Um, there's, uh, once you get into multiple projects, especially multiple projects that interrelate, uh, there's sort of a, an extra dimension that comes in. Um, if you define uh, a job for each of these projects with the same name, uh, in other words, you're saying that Nova needs to run the Tempest test and Glance needs to run the Tempest tests, then uh, Zool notices that and it sees that those two jobs are, or those two projects are interrelated. Um, that sort of sets up the behavior that I was talking about in the demonstration where um, the changes to all of these projects get set up uh, sequentially uh, because, because of that interrelationship. Um, Zool automatically detects this and will build a, a shared queue for any projects that have shared jobs. So it's, it's a little bit of extra configuration that you don't have to do and don't even have to worry about. Zool will do, just uh, do it automatically for you. Um, so Zool does this by, like I said, using the Garrett API, which most of you probably aren't that interested in, uh, and it uses the Jenkins API, which you might be. Um, we found that the Jenkins API is really helpful. It's, uh, it's getting better all the time as new things are added to it. Um, it'd be great if it didn't break after security update releases, but um, <laughs> that's, that's why I'd encourage all of you to write more, um, more applications that use the Jenkins API so, um, um, so that there can be more voices screaming when that sort of thing happens. Also, it would be really great if uh, Jenkins actually tested that sort of thing before making a release. So um, I'm suspecting that API tests may not be um, a big part of the test suite at this point. Um, but, but back on the positive side, uh, it lets you view jobs and, uh, and views. So you can, you can see all of the jobs in your system. You can configure them. Uh, you know, it's got the whole CRUD, uh, create, read, update, delete for, for jobs and views, basically. Um, you can trigger builds on jobs, uh, including parameterized builds. Um, you can alter build descriptions. So, you know, if you've got, um, once, once a job is complete, maybe you want to come back and add some meta information that shows up on the web page for, for that particular build, uh, you can do that. Uh, you can cancel builds, um, uh, and you can inspect the queue and remove items from the queue as well, and you can configure nodes. So these these are all things that uh, we do via Zool. Um, well, except for job configuration, we do that with uh, another Python tool that reads YAML, um, and uh, and we're really happy with it. So just a little bit of, you know, if you happen to be a Python programmer or you've been looking for the perfect excuse to learn Python, uh, there's a really handy Jenkins Python library um, that, you know, basically it's this simple to use. You just import it, you uh, get a Jenkins object, and if you want to build a job, you know, you, you fill in its name here and, uh, and, it, and that's all you need to do to, to trigger a build in Jenkins. Um, Another thing that Zool uses is the notification API. Um, so this is a plugin for Jenkins that uh, will hit basically hit an HTTP URL whenever something interesting happens in a build, like it starts or it finishes or it completes, and um, you get a cookie if you know the difference between finishing and completing in Jenkins. Um, <laughs> but uh, so what we do in Zool is we just set up this little uh, callback handler that listens on you know port 8001. And um, basically what the notification plugin for Jenkins does is it hits this URL and sends you some JSON. And so we load it out of the request body and we've got all the variables that we need right there. We've got the, the build number, what phase of the build it is, what the status is, that's you know success, failure, uh, the URL for the build, um, the parameters that were passed in. So um, 
it's uh, basically you know between um, this end of the process where you're triggering builds and that sort of thing, and then on the other end where builds uh, complete and you get information back from Jenkins, you could you know you can have complete control over Jenkins from an external program, uh, and it lets you set up you know slot Jenkins into your whatever weird build system that you've come up with. Um, so once again, Zool is a, is a, a free software project. So you can see its homepage on Launchpad. You can check out its code from GitHub. Uh, it's got some documentations, surprisingly enough. Uh, we hang out on the OpenStack Infra channel on IRC. So um, it turns out that when we, when we started um, setting up the infrastructure for the OpenStack project, we set as one of our goals the ability for other projects to reuse the work that we're doing. And so everything that we do, we try to make sure anybody else can use. Um, obviously, if you're running an OpenStack project, it's going to work really well for you. Um, if, you're, if you're perhaps building a different kind of software, it might need uh, you know, a little bit of customization. But we actually have several people uh, from other organizations uh, hanging out on our channel uh, talking about how they're using uh, their tools in their own organization. Um, so if we, we'd really welcome your contributions and uh, you, know, you can hop on IRC and ask us questions. Uh, we're especially happy about that if you're going to start um, committing code to Zool and, and, and changes and things like that. Um, we also have a mailing list, so if you want to send a question to the mailing list uh, or keep up with um, how we're planning on breaking Zool next, uh, you can do that. So, but all of this, this apply, everything I've said applies to Zool, but it also applies to everything else we're doing. So if um, you're managing an infrastructure with Puppet, if you're dealing with Garrett or Jen even Jenkins uh, alone, uh, you might be interested in some of the work that we're doing. Um, I probably should have put the OpenStack CI repository on here, um, but every, I can't emphasize this enough, everything that we do is public and is checked into Git on GitHub. Um, the configuration of all of our machines, um, every, everything except the passwords. And, and as it turns out, our email addresses, because that's secret information. Um, but, uh, so, so yeah, hop onto IRC on Freenode, OpenStack Infra, or this mailing list and, and uh, chat with us. Um, and that's about it, except for I should reiterate again that HP Cloud Services is hiring, and you can uh, visit the booth in the reception hall if you want to find out more about that. So um, any questions? Oh, one more thing. Uh, these slides, did I mention everything that we do is available on GitHub? These slides are available on GitHub um, in the publications repository of the OpenStack CI org. So um, they're just HTML. So are there any questions? So, uh, so the question is, where's the project configuration for each of the projects that Zool Watch is stored? Uh, so there's the, the Zool um, uh, layout file, uh, which you know, has uh, this YAML. So that basically, this bit of, of, of the configuration for Zool says, for this project, run these jobs, um, and that's just that's just um, one uh, large, hopefully fairly readable YAML file for um, for Zool. Um, the jobs themselves uh, we configure with a, a project called the Jenkins Job Builder, which is a Python script that reads YAML and uh, outputs Jenkins XML and uh, automatically configures the jobs. So um, there's actually there's a lot of great new work in Jenkins uh, going on in that area with the automatic configuration of jobs like we saw this morning. Uh, so um, a lot of that didn't exist when we started this. Um, I, I suspect that we'll probably go back and, and look at some of those things again. But right now we have you know, our, our 305 jobs are, are configured with this jo uh, Jenkins job builder system which does uh, um, you know, templates in, in YAML. Um, I think without... Do we have a link to the, yeah, we probably don't actually have a link to our, our layout. Yeah, 
So this is the link that I forgot to put in our slide, which yay github.com. Um, this is the link that I forgot to put in our in, in the slide, um, which is the puppet configuration for all of the OpenStack servers. Um, so that's going to include the um, the Zool configuration file. Several levels down. So this is this is the actual production configuration file for Zool for for um, for OpenStack. So uh, you can see I wasn't really lying. It's not much longer than than uh, what was there. And so did I mention we have a lot of projects? So here's here's that section with the projects. Um, you know, over uh, with with every job for every project uh, listed here in in you know, what they should. And so uh, a lot of these things are very similar. Like the core projects are pretty much going to run the same set of uh, jobs um, for, for each one, or at least very similar jobs. And that's part of why we wrote the Jenkins job builder, because the, the, the sender pep8 job is very similar to the, the, the Nova pep8 job and the glance pep8 job. So that's all templated out elsewhere. And then we just say for every project, you know, what, what job Zool should run. Uh, some projects are different. For instance, uh, Zool itself obviously doesn't run the same kind of tests that OpenStack does, but Zool itself is gated through the system just like everything else. We, we eat our own dog food. So, does that uh, answer your question? And maybe even one or two other questions? Uh, yes? Zool handle what? Merge conflicts. Um, so uh, what we have here, uh, all these gate something merge jobs, um, those are basically there to detect merge conflicts. And in fact, the reason why all of these other jobs are indented underneath it is so that Zool knows to run the merge job first, see if there is a merge conflict, and if there is, don't even bother running the other jobs. So, uh, so basically, we've got early exiting on merge conflicts, and it leaves a comment back in Garrett that says the change um, can't be merged with the current state of the repository. You need to rebase your change. So, um, we've just we've uh, been changing a little bit about how Zool uh, uh, does some of the handles some of the uh, the merging. Uh, we've moved some of this into Zool itself. So, actually, at this point. Um, Zool itself will try to merge this change before even talking to, to, to Jenkins. Um, and so we've got even earlier um, exiting from merge conflicts. Um, in the black coat, you. Yes. So, um, right, that's, that's correct. So actually the, the developers um, currently don't see the UI a lot. Um, and one of the reasons for that is we, um, well, first of all, when you start running um, uh, gate jobs the way that we're doing, where we start jobs and then cancel them before they're even finished because something else changed in some other change, actually looking at, say, you know, the... The, the lovely graphs in Jenkins that tell you how code coverage or, or unit tests change over time, suddenly that doesn't make sense anymore because you've got, you know, between one change and another, you might have um, 50 failed builds and nothing actually failed because nothing got merged. So um, that's why a, a lot of this sort of, um, essentially we're focusing developers on Garrett as the place to find out information about their changes. So, and, and that's actually a really useful thing because that means that developers don't, you know, they don't have to go to the code review system to see what the code looks like and then go over to the test system to see how the code is performing under tests. They see it all in one place. And sort of that place, that dashboard for us is Garrett. Um, so that, that works out well for us. Having said that, um, you know, there's, you can, uh, when we first started using Zool, we, we still had a lot of things in Jenkins where people would go look at the results there. So you can, you can certainly do that. We found for the way that we run into what we're trying to do, uh, that's less useful. Um, 
possibly another thing you're getting at is we don't do configuration of the jobs in the Jenkins web UI, the Jenkins web user interface. Uh, that's all done by Jenkins job builder, the Python YAML uh, files. And um, one, one of those reasons is because, like I said, at the time, the tools in Jenkins to do that kind of job templating weren't there. Uh, another reason that we're probably going to keep doing something like that, whether whether it's, you know, even if we start using some of the new features in Jenkins for doing job templates, we still might drive them from files that are in Git. And the reason we want to do that is because, like the OpenStack project itself, we want the OpenStack infrastructure to be able to be modified by anyone. So we want you to be able to make a change to a Jenkins job without having to log in and as an administrator to Jenkins. So all you have to do is check out a copy of uh, this repository and go in and, and change one of the jobs that we have configured in our YAML files, submit that change for review. Um, you know, If we like it, we'll approve it, and that will happen in production on Jenkins. So none of those steps involve somebody asking for administrative access or opening up a ticket for somebody to click through the web UI. And, and so that's, that's a big part of our design. So, so does Jenkins ever give you jobs? No, that's, that's sort of the, the sister project, which is um, the Jenkins Job Builder, uh, which is um, also under the OpenStack uh, CI um, GitHub repository. So uh, you can see all of our, um, our projects here. So Jenkins Job Builder is is in there, and actually, um, we have a link to Job Builder. I'm sure I have that. So, just real quick, Jenkins Job Builder. Our, you know, the YAML for that looks like this. Um, here's a you know, create a job, its name is job name. It's a freestyle job, uh, it gets these defaults, right? So uh, obviously it goes into much more detail with that and, and actually Jenkins Job Builder is an entire other presentation. Um, but uh, if you want, uh, the documentation is on ci.openstack.org and you can read uh, about everything that we're doing, uh, including Jenkins, Jenkins Job Builder, and Zool. And it's got links to the, the documentations for all of those there too. <laughs> 